And we would love to be able to send you this book. Uh, it's called Understanding Jesus, and the author, once again, Joe Amaral, is with us. Joe, man, you have just uh, mm. added such value to our program these past few days, all week long. Thank you. And we're grateful. We've been talking about the book. We mm. talked a little yesterday about how Christ changed your life. But we are at an interesting day on the calendar. Today, I believe, if I'm yep. correct, yep. is the sixth anniversary yeah. of your father's home going to heaven. Yeah. And uh, our condolences, obviously, to oh. you and our sympathy and love to you. We know that's hard when you're, it's tough. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, uh, mm -hmm. you will see him yeah. again because of Jesus Christ and the promises of the Bible that you so love. Yeah, you know, in, in the second half hour, you know, I want to talk about that, that hope that we have because without that hope, it's just a really sad day. It's just a really bad day. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's the Apostle Paul who said, you know, if Christ didn't raise from the dead or rise from the dead, then our hope is in vain. That's if right. If we just eat, sleep, and then die. and It's all centered in the resurrection. It, yeah, there's, there's nothing to it, but thank God there is a resurrection. But in the, in the natural, in the physical here in the world today, it, it's a sad day because, you know, although I have the hope in my heart that I know I'm going to see my dad one day and he won't be suffering anymore, he won't be in pain, um, but in the meantime... It's hard to go on without your dad. Uh, a father figure is very, very important in a, right. in a young man's life. Right. And, you know, my, my dad died at a really critical time in my life, just before Understanding Jesus was published. Uh, you know, he, he came here, I uh, shared about how he, you know, they, they left Portugal to come to Canada to give me a better life. And just before the book was published, he passed. And, Aww. you know, uh, it, was, it was a bittersweet, you know, day. We came out of the, the publisher's office, you know, and you're on... Uh, I forget the name of the street now in New York City and there's all these big buildings around and I just signed this amazing contract and I came out and I was crying and my wife said, w w you know, why are you crying? Yeah. I said, he missed it by, uh, by, by that much. Yeah. So I hope one day that he and I can have a conversation and I can thank him for all the sacrifices. Joe, I have a father who is 90 and we wow. just put him in an uh, assisted living facility recently and it's been very tough on yeah. our family and we have families across our viewing audience sure. that are either trying to figure out how to give their parents dignity in their extreme senior years and comfort and medical help that they need and some need 24-hour care. We have some who have um, lost their parents. Mm -hmm. We have others whose parents are estranged, uh, mom yeah. and dad are yeah. fighting. Uh, What's your thoughts today about the importance of, 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 a, of a father and a mother in, in one's life? And, yeah. and if you don't have mm -hmm. that, how much more important it is to, to have a close relationship with God the Father? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I would say is do everything and anything you can to make it right. Because you think you have all the time in the world, you know, you think you know when it's going to happen, and so you can just in the nick of time, sneak in and fix the relationship. I'm telling you, if you're estranged from your mom or your dad or anybody, I mean, get, get it right now. Don't, don't wait. Because Pick up the phone know. now. You never know when it's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I remember when we first got the phone call that my dad had passed out, and he was having some issues before that with his balance. And the ambulance guy said, you know, it might be an inner ear issue, and it's no problem. And then they did this, this uh, CAT scan and came out and said, Mr. Amel, you have a stage four, you know, brain tumor. Mm. And I'll never forget, I can still see my dad's chest begin to rise and fall really quickly. He got yeah. so, yeah. I said, Dad, you know what he said? He said, he didn't speak English. He goes, I know what cancer means. Uh -huh. You know, and it was, it was such a, a tough time because, you know, I've said this before, here I am, you know, working with Israel, blessing the Jewish people, and there's, there's a promise that I would bless those who bless Israel. And I said, God, I don't understand. I'm doing, I go to church, I tithe, I preach your gospel all over the world. How could this happen to my dad? Mm -hmm. And it was actually my father who helped put me at peace. What did he with say? With the whole thing. He said, you know, he says, Joe, who do you think I am that I shouldn't die? Greater men than I have died. Why shouldn't, why not I? So how can you say that? You know, and he said, Joe, it's going to happen to everybody. And he had this amazing attitude. And, and even on his deathbed, when he could barely, barely speak and he could no longer recognize us, if he, if he egged him on and fed him the words, he would sing these worship songs in Portuguese, yeah. you know, to God. And, and that was such a witness to, to me, to my, my unsafe family members who came and they said, 
how can he be worshiping God? I said, he's getting ready. He's practicing for eternity. How has, a, how has this Jesus that you try so hard to understand as you read the Bible and as you interpret, interpret uh, the Bible through culture, how has this same Jesus given you comfort in these six years? The comfort he's given me is his resurrection. You know, you can look to so many other different religions that have great philosophies and have good, you know, and, and equally high morals, mm -hmm. but their leaders are still dead. They're still in the grave. But, you know, we can take our viewers to, uh, to Jerusalem. I'll take them to a tomb that's empty. Right. You know, because he's, he's a God that keeps his words. He keeps his promises. And he said, because I live, you'll live. And, and I'm telling you, that's the only thing that, that would keep me sane during the whole process, watching a strong, healthy, good man deteriorate like that and then pass into eternity. And, and the only thing that keeps me going is that Jesus and God, that he's a man mm -hmm. of his word. And I know that I'm going to see him healthy, happy. Yeah. We can talk about soccer for all of eternity and we can just connect With, with resurrected bodies. I, I'm so looking forward to, to that you know, reun, reunion it, in heaven. It means a lot to us that in the midst of all the, the depth that we've talked about, that you've been so transparent and allow us to see into your lives and you have to be. what happened, what yeah. happened with your dad and uh, even now. You suffer, but because of that blessed hope, we yeah. shall see him, Jesus Christ, as he is, and he will be, your father will be surrounded in that chorus of the saints. Yeah, his tombstone says, alive in Jesus. Amen. Yeah. That says it all. Yeah. So, so let me ask you, how are you doing on the journey? If death faced you, that diagnosis of cancer, that incurable disease from a human standpoint, comes to your body, are you ready to meet eternity? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you know this one that uh, John here and Joe there, mm -hmm. by the grace of God, know? Have you experienced his forgiveness? Have you experienced his gift of eternal life? Right now, wherever you are, wherever you may be, you may be hearing this on radio, you may be watching us on television, it may be Early in the morning, it may be in the middle of the night. And for some reason, you've camped here on this program. Something Joe said, something we've said has brought you here. Well, we believe that's the Lord. And we believe it's so important that you have him in your life. There's a phone number on the screen. It's a prayer line. I would encourage you to call that prayer line and speak to people on the other end of that line about what it means to know Jesus. But before you call, how about praying with me right here, right now, this prayer. Dear God in heaven, I am a sinner. I am sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I believe Jesus died for me, that he rose from the dead, and that he lives forevermore. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Joe and John here in that belief. I believe that Jesus lives and I need him in my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Forgive me and give me the gift of eternal life. And I will serve you from this day forward in Jesus' name. If you prayed with me, call the prayer line number right now. We welcome you into the family of God.